Welcome to my technical Tuesday latest update. I think this is number five. We're going to look at the stochastic oscillator uh, today. Uh, definitely something that I do use. Um, right, so here you see on my screen I've got the settings for it. I think these are pretty standard. Percent K periods 10, 3, uh, average period 3, and then percent D period is 3. So I'm just going to add that to my chart now. And they see the stochastic oscillator at the bottom of the page. A uh, bit of background, the stochastic oscillator is a momentum indicator that compares the closing price to the price range over a given period. So in other words, it shows the close relative to the range over a set number of periods in a bull trend. Prices should tend to close near the upper end of the range, of course. In a bear trend, prices tend to close near the low of the range. And therefore, the stochastic oscillator is designed to follow the speed or momentum of that market. Uh, in other words, if prices are not closing up near the high uh, end, upper, upper end of the range for the day, the stochastic oscillator will not be as strong as bear, uh, bulls would hope it is. Uh, stochastic oscillator contains two lines. The first line is the percent K, which is essentially the raw measure used to formulate the idea of momentum behind the, behind the oscillator. Second line is a percent D, which simply uh, a moving average of the percent K and the percent D is considered to be the more important of the two lines as it is seen to produce better signals. Okay, so uh, generally we use the past 14 periods in the calculation. Um, as a rule, momentum changes before the uh, momentum changes direction before the trend. That, so therefore divergences in the stochastic oscillator can be used to indicate potential reverses in trends. If the stochastic oscillator is starting to turn lower in a bull trend or is having lower highs when the price is showing higher highs, this indicates that momentum is changing. Price is, for, is failing to close in the upper area of the range, despite the continuation of the bull trend. Okay, so um, this is my, fa one, my favorite indicator, at least, and I do find it useful for identifying overbought and oversold levels as well. I use the slow stochastic, not the fast. Okay, so this is an up-to-date chart of the gold price going back over one year. Uh, this is a great example, actually. Uh, so. As the market begins to, as the, as the market bottoms out, you can see that the uh, stochastic oscillator is in oversold territory. In other words, it's under the 20 line. So we, we're aware that it's uh, oversold. And then as the oscillator turns higher and uh, the slow line, uh, sorry, the fast line, the gray one, crosses over the red one, you can see that we accelerate quite quickly. And this is matched almost perfectly in timing by the price move. As we begin to get overbought, uh, there's a little warning that we're getting overbought. And eventually the price does react and has a small correction, as you can see, bringing the, at least re, um, remove, allowing the uh, oscillator to trend lower. We then bounce. You, you see we're, we're developing into a bull trend. Of course, we don't know we're developing into a bull trend. So this is something you've got to be careful of. Uh, the market will spend a long time in above the 80 line when we are in a bull trend. And this is when you've got to be careful. Uh, trend identifica identification is extremely important. If you're if you're looking to sell every time we get overbought and we're in a bull trend, you're going to lose a lot of money. So um, eventually, when the market does flatten out and it's and it flatlines for a good three or four months here, this is when the stochastic oscillator is fantastic as a trade as a help to help you spot trade opportunities. So we don't know that it's flattening out, but uh, down here when we bottom out, uh, this uh, the oscillator will help us to buy and as you see they cross over which is bullish and then up through the 20 line which is bullish and that will take you if that was to take you into a long position that would have worked really really well now the first peak not so well we actually only trade sideways which is quite common but that does allow the oscillator to move back from the overbought situation to about the halfway line then we rally again but this time it would have been a quite a good opportunity to sell if you combine it with other things for example look at that big negative candle up there couple of big negative candles in fact bearish engulfing bearish engulfing so uh, with other with other indicate uh, with other tools that you know from your technical analysis toolbox uh, that would have indicated that perhaps it would be a good sell if you thought we were entering a sideways trend and the uh, moving averages are actually moving quite sideways down we go you know we're at least in a bull trend because we have been trending higher since December so you're happier buying into dips and the oscillator becomes very oversold here but much way below the 20 line crosses over, becomes bullish, up through the 20 line, showing some strength, bang, market takes off again. 
becomes overbought. You see the pattern. So when we trend sideways, this is very, very, well, it's a lot easier to trade this. Uh, when the market decides to then take off, you've got to be careful because you can spend a lot of time in the upper band in the in the overbought territory and then that can cause problems you're getting short into a bull market something you definitely don't want to do if you are in a bull trend you want to be buying onto into dips this is when the oscillator works if you can identify that we are in a bull trend and then we do get a corrective phase we come oversold uh, then this will indicate to you that hey look for some buying opportunities but for timing you need to look at some of the other tools that i've explained in previous and that i will explain in future uh, technical Tuesday videos uh, again caught the peak quite nicely here and we're now catching a trough so uh, to summarize this works particularly well in the sideways moving market or it works well looking for buying opportunities in a bull market and of course looking for selling opportunities in a bear market but if the market is if this is stubbornly staying in overbought territory and the market is trending higher do not think about entering a short position stick with the trend uh, if the market is holding in the upper area of the uh, of the range uh, in the oscillator then it shows us a lot of strength okay lastly we have uh, what we call a divergence indicator when we use a stochastic oscillator so this is how it works we are in a bear trend in this particular segment of the market that you see here from uh, august september down to december of 2016. Uh, at the very end uh, you can see how, how the oscillator does catch the peaks and troughs uh, at the very end of this move in the last sort of month or so the price is clearly continuing to trend lower but the oscillator is doing the exact opposite it's starting well it's flattening out and actually if anything trending higher so it's not reinforcing the bearish message here and as you see there is more and more indecision in the market in these candles the way they're closing sort of unchanged here we've got some dojis we're not closing at the lower end of the range on all the candles as you can see we're getting some shadows down here um, with the long candle wicks and we're certainly getting some blue candles in here so it's indicating that there could be a momentum change and this is what the oscillator is clearly displaying by starting to trend upwards certainly flat and if anything starting to trend upwards so this is what we called a would call a negative diver a positive divergence the market is the price is trending lower but this is starting to trend higher and this will indicate to you that the momentum is potentially changing and there could be a trend change and of course in the end there was a trend change okay so that's a brief outline of the stochastic oscillator to give you uh, in an idea of how it works i do try to keep these technical tuesday videos down to uh, below 10 minutes so i don't send you all to sleep but i do have a course which uh, in, goes into the all the things that I, I show on these technical Tuesdays in in a, in a lot of detail and when you sign up for the course you also get access to me for free forever so uh, if you're interested in really educating yourself and learning exactly all the techniques that I use every day on and, and analyzing up to 20 or 25 markets then uh, I do highly recommend that course <laughs>